Hi, this is Larry Griffin. Welcome to episode one of my uh, Griffix for CASSP 2023. And it's one of four. And I just have four simple little tools. I, I put on this virtual appliance that I hope will help my CISSP students understand how federated uh, identity management works. What, the, what is the big picture? What's wrong with it? <laughs> and how we might be able to fix it and have some people work on it. So federated identity management always works with some public key infrastructure. And I don't know a single one that works without an X.509 certificate format that I can use on the internet. This is the format that, that uh, YouTube presented to your browser in the background before you trusted that it was really YouTube. So we're going to use uh, the first of my four tools, Wireshark, to passively examine that. Now, uh, the challenge with TLS 1.3 is that the certificate, it comes after, um, well, we know in any TLS handshake, uh, we have uh, the first step is to do the client hello. And the client says, oh, well, hi, these are all the algorithms I support, my Cypher suite. And then the, the server says, well, if that's the case, let's use these algorithms. Well, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then here's the tricky part. Uh, it's server sends a certificate. Uh, and in TLS 1.2, this is clear text. But in 1.3, this is now encrypted. Because once we've agreed on the algorithms, they can do something there. So that's a little tricky. And we're going to get the session key to tell Wireshark, hey, you know, our Firefox browser was nice enough when, when he did his hello and they got the certificate that he wrote down on the, uh, you know, <laughs> wrote down his key number. Uh, and he said, hey, if you want to go back in there and decrypt it. So we're going to see how to do that. That's our goal. And again, uh, oh, I make a living doing this stuff. I hope uh, this inspires you to want to take some of my classes, you know, and I go over this tool much more depth, especially in my CACSP class. Um, but it solves the most challenging part, the, the hardest part, and the most important part in any development life cycle. So if we're security people and we're developing solutions for somebody that says protects them from someone else, suppose I get those people confused. Oh, I thought you were the protector. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really matter after that. So we got to get that part right. And it's hard, you know. So these X.509 certificates are the credentials we give. You know, when you Bob says he's Bob, yeah, I need to prove it, you know, whatever driver's license, something, passport. Well, that's what certificates are. This is how, you know, like I said, you, you know, this is YouTube. And uh, well, you know, just to decide, make sure that when you're architecting solutions, you don't just prove who you are. You, need to, you know, it's nice to prove who you are to the uh, uh, the ATM, but it wouldn't be nice to know that that was your ATM and not a uh, skimmer. Uh, so again, my tool has, um, uh, my little appliance here, has four tools to help you understand X.509 and Federated Identity. Wireshark, our goal today is just passively do it. Episode two, we're going to use Nmap and get a little more active stuff. Episode three, we're going to use Cleopatra to create some keys. And, and uh, maybe if we want to get it federated, we could just use it in PGP. You know, I'm using it alone. It's not federated. But if I really want to get it federated, sure, I can create a certificate request, fill out the form, and take it to a certificate authority, which is lab four, episode four, where we are the certificate authority. And we'll sign those keys. We'll be, we'll be the federation. All right, so, and please know, my, my security class, I'm a person with an abundance mindset, and I, I really am not trying to, you know, train my children or whatever, be better and compete with other people, you know, no, I just want you to be who you are, just be honest, and that's what's important, you know, we've seen all these supply chain issues, you know, and that's what blockchain's all about, this is what federated identity management, when you get something digitally signed, I'm supposed to believe that really is them, right, no, that's our goal. And I'm not trying to uh, build something that, you know, and we're not competing. We're trying to help everybody. We're trying to, you know, high tide lifts all boats. And the Federation created this. This is why it's called Federation. So the ISO is, I'm sure other Star Trek fans in there. But it's right now, currently this year, 167 from Afghanistan uh, to Zimbabwe, members of uh, a place. And we need to know who we are. And we're all on the same page and, and without bias. You know, that's the enemy of the, uh, of the decade, bias. So the ISO, one of the things they did was develop the, the X.500 uh, name format. That's, you know, we're, we are going to put everyone in the directory and the first field shall be a, either a service or a subject name. And then we'll go to the organization shall be second and the organization type shall be third. Uh, 
And the 509 certificate is to make it reasonably certain that, yeah, I guess that is YouTube.com. Yeah. ID matches. And for many years, uh, you know, we're not talking AES, SHA. We're talking these algorithms. For many, most people were using RSA for just about, you know, all of your identity. Your RSA key pair isn't for encrypting your safe. It isn't for, you know, it's, it's there to just prove it's you. It's to make sure that only you get the key to the safe or it's a, that you must have been the one to send it, you know. Um, after solar winds, we saw a lot of people start to catch up when it took a curve. And uh, this year, we've, we've certified a few uh, post-quantum algorithms, uh, NIST to certified crystals and, and open SSL. I saw them at for Entru. Uh, we'll see if we see that in our handshake. But our goal is really just two basic steps. Two basic steps to get Wireshark to decrypt this certificate. One is to start a browser that's nice enough to write down the uh, session keys as they get in there. You know? So it's like asking somebody when they check into your hotel, I promise you, we can't look in your room. But would you mind putting it on the camera so we could do some diagnostic? Ah, okay. So what you do is you configure Firefox. I saw Chris Greer, actually a great Wireshark YouTuber, do this with uh, uh, Chrome, and then I validated that it worked with Wireshark. I can't get it to work with uh, with Microsoft Edge, but you say, hey, would you write down, would you turn the, <laughs> the camera? Now, would you export the SSL key, key files to a log? Yeah, and put that file somewhere that I can get to. In my case, I, I'm, I'm going to put it in my home directory, and I just call it keys.log, you know. And then, and then um, I'm going to get Wire or Firefox ready to load, but I'm not going to hit enter yet. All right, you can, but it just makes it kind of cool if you follow along. Um, so then, the next step is to start Wireshark before I, you know, and get it capturing, and then start your Firefox. See, because what happens is I start capturing with Wireshark, I load it up, and then I start Firefox, and it gets that initial boot up, you know, and 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 my Firefox is configured to open up four four windows. One of them is to my server. Now, TLS one two handshakes will start showing up. I'm going to put in the the uh, display filter, display only the traffic that's TLS, if it's the TLS handshake, and it contains the certificate. And I'll see a bunch of certificates, but there'll be one, two. You're not going to see TLS 1.3. In order to see the 1.3, I have to configure Wireshark to know where that file is we just created. Oh, go to that room. Go to that location. Go to Preferences, Protocols, which should be a, a drop down up here, and then TLS, and that's where we are right here. And then we're going to browse to that file and pick that file. So let's do that right now. Oh. export hey please write this down and this is cap sensitive key oops ssl key log file equals in quotes slash home slash to the nerd slash and i'll just call it keys dot log you to call it whatever you want. They hit enter. And now I'll get the command ready, Firefox, but I'm not going to hit it because I want to sniff that out. I'll start Wireshark. Suspense is killing me. There it goes. All right, so I see traffic on my internet, but I don't want to see all this noise. So I'm going to put in my TLS dot show me only tls traffic handshake traffic not just any and not just any handshake but only where the certificate is there All right, now i'll start my capture let's get the editor here there so now i'm only going to see tls display and then i'll start my firefox and i should start seeing some some certificates I see TLS one two one two handshake. Oh, look at that! Pretty cool, huh? And see, I've got my homepage up, and I know that's one three, but I don't see that. So let me stop it, and I'm going to go again to edit preferences protocols. T, and you can hit a T and get you down to the T's, but then you got to. Down the TLS list. I mean, 
All right, pre-master secret log file name. I'm going to browse for it. Keys.log. Okay. And now we see our one threes, but it's encrypted. It's encrypted. Hey, hey, baby. The HTTP3, if anybody knows, that's always encrypted. I always say, if you see HTTP3, <laughs> then you are doing something. You've got your encrypted traffic going on. Pretty cool. So let's find my certificate. There's Internet Network Defense certificate. And open that up. Now, my certificate was issued by um, uh, Let's Encrypt, so I'd have to get their certificate as well. And we're seeing the whole chain, and we do that in another sniff. The, the purpose of this thing is to prove now that we've put in that, that key log, that session key, and the issuer is always the CA that signed it. And there's my uh, the subject uh, is me. And then the, the date's just like a driver's license. It, issue, it was issued on this date, but it's going to expire on that date, and we did it. All right. So that's it. That's all we really want to uh, get to today. We wanted to uh, show you how to use Wireshark really quickly. And I, I hope you found that useful. All right. Hope to see you in one of my classes. Bye-bye now. Live long and prosper.